afternoon, you shoot out fresh. I'm Aaron Golgobert, and this is the Fresh News Network. It's an exciting time here on West Century Road, as Fresh students return this fall to an amazingly versatile outdoor indoor campus. From tents and lawn furniture to larger double-sized classrooms, our incredible facility sets up students for success, no matter what the weather. Here's Kelly Scheinfeld for more. They say October goes out like a lamb and November comes in like a lion. And true to the saying, while November may have started off in the sunshine, it went from 60 to 30 real quick. Luckily, we have an amazing administration that made the jump from outdoors to indoors and back out again seamless. The beginning of the school year brought about many changes, the biggest one being classes outside. Frisch utilized its outdoor campus to create classroom experiences outside of a physical building. The outdoor shul, calf, great lawn, and tables and chairs set up all around the campus gave it a real academic feel, almost like a college campus. Students were happy to have a snack, take a mass break, or simply get some sun. But when the weather dropped and our frosty fingers began having trouble typing, it was time to move inside. Now, virtually every large space in the building is being utilized to ensure our learning continues in a reasonable, temperate, safe, and socially distanced environment. There is learning taking place in every corner of the building, and it is truly a beautiful thing to see. The one thing I think everyone will take away from this experience is to never again complain about how cold it is inside the building. For Fresh News, I'm Carly Scheinfeld. Thanks, Carly. As with other so-called pandemic industries, masks have become part of our daily lives, and so the mask industry was born. But should masks be a fashion statement? What does it all mean for the fashion industry? Our own Kitty Mantel sat down with artist and art teacher Mrs. Mira Levy to discuss. Whether we like it or not, COVID-19 is present and active in our lives. People all over the world are faced with questions, including which mask should I wear today? While helping prevent the spread of coronavirus, masks reflect fashion statements, emotions, and simply eye-catching designs. Can the fashion industry benefit from the number one virus prevention tool? I met with Mrs. Levy to get an artist's perspective. Hello, Mrs. Levy. Thanks for sitting down with me to do this interview. How do you think COVID-19 affected the fashion industry? Well, it added a new element to everyone's fashion, like day-to-day -day fashion. I know that like people buy different pattern fabric masks and they match them to their outfits and it's like another added accessory, like a handbag. Have you seen any cool masks roam around the halls of Frisch? Yeah, yours. <laughs> your handmade mask. Um, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of different colored masks that are like going around. Many companies have benefited off of making new products specializing in pandemic apparel. What are your thoughts on that? In the beginning, when the pandemic first happened, there weren't enough masks. I think it's good that all these stores are now making masks so that it's like more accessible to people and anyone can get one. Um, there's different price ranges for the people and that they did that. And so if they're going to be cool and like people can have fun with them and anything to get people to wear masks I think is really important. Completely. And yeah. lastly, what is something you'd like to see come out of the pandemic from the art industry? I guess just how people are producing work like in their new environments and finding inspiration through different things. Like a lot of people lost their studios and they're trying to figure out how to work from home and it's just like a huge change, but it's, it's inspiring to watch people continue to, artists continue to create during this time. Yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. For Fresh News, I'm Kayla Mantel. Thank you, Kayla. Switching gears now, November is National Diabetes Month a time when communities across the country team up to bring attention to diabetes. Two of our own Frisch students have joined the cause by selling sweatshirts to raise awareness and money to fund important research. Here is Daniela Moadab. Hi, I'm Daniela Moadab, and I'm here with Sam Weinberger and Sarah Wurzberger to learn more about World Diabetes Day. Sarah, why do you think it's important to spread awareness about diabetes? Um, I think it's important to sp spread awareness because not a lot of people know about it, and especially type 1 diabetes, it's not obvious from the outside, and there are a lot of day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. struggles. What exactly affects one's daily life about diabetes, with living with diabetes? Um, so what we need to do is we have to manually um, keep our blood sugar levels in between uh, specific numbers. 
So if it'll go too high, then we'll feel a little sick um, sometimes. So we have to um, make sure that to keep it under, but then also if it goes too low, we also feel um, like faint, like dizzy. So we have to keep it right in that, like um, the right spot. Um, also, we have to like, check our sugar. So either prick your finger or people have like special monitors that does it for them, but we always need to be checking it. Um, take insulin, like the medicine before each meal or any carbs. There's just a lot to do every day. Where did you guys get the idea to start selling the sweatshirts in honor of diabetes? Um, so last year, my sister, um, she was telling me about how um, a kid in her school was selling hoodies and how they were really cozy and I thought it was a really nice idea. So basically just brought it to Frisch. And so nice. Where are the proceeds for the sweatshirts going to? Um, they're going to Franstein Lab of Massachusetts General Hospital. Oh, wow. They have a lab there that um, is trying to find a cure for type 1 diabetes. That's amazing. Great. Well, thank you guys so much. I really, really thank appreciate you. it on behalf of Frisch um, for organizing this. Um, and for Frisch News, I'm Danielle Odom. Back to the studio. Thanks, Daniela. And now, one of our favorite segments, Frisch on the Street. We've been wondering, what are Frisch students thankful for this Thanksgiving? We caught up with them at our first turkey trot. Turkey trot. Turkey trot was no joke. There's a big hill over there, a part of Frisch. Who knew? What are you thankful for this year, Rebecca? Uh, I'm thankful that Frisch is open and we were able to have the turkey trot and be outside and together with all our friends. We're thankful for our sports teams. We're thankful for turduckins. A turduckin is basically it is a, a turkey that is stuffed with a duck that is then stuffed with a chicken. So what are you thankful for this year? I'm thankful for my friends, my family, and all my teachers, and this amazing school. I am grateful every day to be here with my students, with the Rabbeim, with all the faculty, and the administration here at Frisch. It's awesome to be back. I'm, I'm thankful for being healthy. I'm thankful that the school is still open. I'm thankful for my family. We're thankful for physics. I'm thankful for all my great friends and family. I'm thankful for my family and being in Frisch. I'm thankful for my beautiful friends. And I am thankful for this gorgeous weather. I am thankful for the amazing engineering track at Frisch. This year, thankful for my students, thankful for my family, and uh, thanking Hashem every day of life. Thank you, Hashem. 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 Hey, I'm Avi Freeman reporting for the First News Network. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I'm Aaron Gulliver, and from all of us here at Fish News, we wish you and your family a happy and meaningful Thanksgiving. And as always, thanks for watching.